y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. We just had our first frost yesterday. Thankfully, all of my vegetables and tomatoes are doing perfect in the greenhouse, but that does mean winter is coming, fall is finishing off for the year, and it means we need to talk about our winter numbers. So let's hop into it. So this video is not for my baby homesteaders, the ones who are just getting started into rabbits, but it's definitely something to put in your toolbox for later on in your journey. Uh, this is for my homesteaders who have done this for a while and are in what I like to call their hoarding phase. Um, do I hoard? Maybe slightly. Um, it's where you have a bunch of rabbits, you need to cut down on your winter numbers, but you're hemming and hawing about who you should get rid of because you like this color or you like that color or you're like me and you just have a bad habit of keeping a lot of bucks. So let's hop into our does, our bucks, our grow outs, how you should decide who to keep, who to get rid of and all of that good stuff. Currently with my grow outs, I have 10 bucks. With that, do I need 10 bucks? Absolutely not. So I need to start cutting down on these numbers. So let's talk about how I decide to cut down on the bucks that I don't want to keep anymore. Let's start out with the very obvious and easy things to kind of look at to, you know, get rid of some of these bucks. Do they have any obvious markings for my show people that would get them DQ'd? Such as this little guy, he still hasn't shed out his little star on his forehead and he has a white spot on his nose. Uh, automatically, he's going to be a cull once he grows out a little bit more because he does not fit within the breeding program for show. In here, I have two little mini Rex bucks. Toothless is here to stay for a little bit while longer because I want to breed him back to his mother. But after that, he is probably going to go. Another thing we look at when it comes to our bucks and our grow out bucks especially is, are they better than their fathers? If you are growing out a buck to kind of see what it looks like, the biggest thing you want to look at is, are they going to outproduce the sire that you have tried and true? If they aren't automatically just from their body type and they're going to be a hindrance towards your pro program, it's not worth keeping them. They're just eating up your money. When it comes to our senior bucks, it's a little more complicated because you have a multitude of things to look at. First off for my meat breeders and a lot of times my show breeders is your buck easily keeping condition? Is he very easy to feed and keep in a nice performance level? If you have one buck that survives on an eighth of a cup a day compared to another buck that survives on a half of a cup a day, that's a huge difference of feed ratios and something you should really look into. Another thing we want to look at is production. When paired to multiple does, which of your bucks produces the better offspring that grow out faster? If you have multiple bucks and one is seriously outperforming the other, it might be time to let go of that buck that is not producing for you. Our goal in the winter is to be as sustainable as possible in a time where we're in a bit of a lull when it comes to our breeding and our production. The more mouths we have to feed, the more feed we have to feed. And at the end of the day, that's just not cost effective. Now, something I am going to preface, I do like keeping two bucks of a breed at a time just in case uh, something happens to one of my bucks. With that being said, it doesn't necessarily need to be two senior bucks. You can have your main senior buck and a backup junior that you are growing out as a part of your line breeding. So that's definitely something you want to keep track of. If you want a just in case buck, go for it. That's what I do. If you're fine with just having one buck and you have a supplier right down the road who will easily be able to replace them, Perfect, good on you, do what works for your program. Let's talk does. And this one's a little difficult for me, uh, especially when it comes to this doe right here. This is Penguin and a couple of weeks ago she was on her last litter. She had eight babies. And as you can see, she has absolutely no babies. Um, all of her babies were either failures to thrive or at one point in time, they all got out of the nesting box around two weeks and they froze on the wire. Which, you know, two weeks is normal for babies to start coming out of the nest, but for whatever reason, we had a cold snap and they weren't able to survive that. 
Now that could just be based on environmental factors or that can be based on genetic factors. Be that as it may, that was Penguin's very last breeding. So we have moved her butcher date up. And that's because I have a doe that I want to replace her with that has much nicer type and much nicer fur. But that brings us into the question of does. Why are you keeping a doe? A doe's purpose in a breeding program is to produce babies that are better than her. If you have a doe that has stopped producing or maybe at her prime she was producing 10 in a litter and now she's only producing one or two, it might be time to let her go out of your program. If you have a doe that has a very high attrition rate when it comes to her babies, that also might be a sign it's time to let go. Another thing to look at with our does uh, past a production standpoint of is she producing better babies than herself? Is she producing the colors that you want? Um, especially for my show people, is she compati compatible color genetics wise with your bucks? So for instance, Sadie, she's a caster. Caster is one of the strongest genes that you can have color wise in your program. She produces a lot of casters, even when paired up to a buck that has recessive carriers. Do I want casters in my program? If the answer is no, it's probably time to replace that animal and put in an animal that will produce the colors that you want. Another thing to look at when it comes to does is temperament. Um, I do not like messing with nasty does. Um, does that are nasty both in nature and how they keep their nesting box. If you have a mean animal, it's not worth dealing with. Uh, getting scratched up constantly. Um, you want very nice animals that are easy to handle and make raising rabbits enjoyable. Um, uh, nasty mothers in the nest box is also another one of my pet peeves. I hate babysitters. And by that, I mean uh, moms that are constantly in the nest box beyond feeding their babies. I'm talking about the ones that use their nest box as a litter box when they have babies in it. It's something you really want to avoid and will really help with your attrition numbers if you can get does that stay out of the nest box. Finally, let's talk grow outs. Uh, grow outs are a hard topic for me because I always have a problem with holding on to ones that I are show quality, but I don't need in my breeding program. Knowing when it is time to cull out the animals that you no longer want to feed and won't sell. A great example of this are these two caster babies. Um, casters aren't very popular for show in my area. And although these two babies have amazing type, they're beautiful, amazing fur density. No one wants a simple brown rabbit. So if they don't sell within the next month or so, I'll have to cull them out before winter hits. But when it comes to babies, you need to know when to cull it. And that includes grow outs, right? Um, normally you want to cull a rabbit out by the time it's about five pounds. But if you notice a runt is struggling to get up there, you've had them for four or five months, they're still not hitting that five pound mark. It just might be time to call it and not waste any more food on it. Um, you want to cut your losses. And I know that's very harsh and very, you know, strict, but it's better to do that than to waste pounds and pounds of feed to try to get those final ounces onto a rabbit. Another option to culling your rabbits are ones that bite your butt when they want attention. Lemon, what the heck, my guy? Oh, you're annoying. Stop it. Lemon is an absolute sweetheart though. I absolutely adore this little buck's personality. He is a bit of a stinker and he will chew on your clothes as you walk by if you don't come give him lovings. But I'm testing him out right now as a junior buck to see if he can replace his father Alpha in our breeding program. So he's going to stick around in the winter just as a breeding buck to see what he produces with some of our current does. So yes, cutting numbers, especially in the winter, can be very hard and it's a very good learning lesson when you are building your rabbitry up and growing your numbers. Who is better to get rid of because they aren't going to benefit your program? And this is by no means me say, cull all your stock, get rid of everyone except for your first trio. That's not me saying that. You can keep as many rabbits as you are comfortable with. This is just for those people who are trying to kind of trim the fat and get an idea of what will not work for them. So just keep that in mind as you're moving forward. You can keep whoever you want. Just 
think about it if you're trying to make something more sustainable and efficient for your homestead. But anyway, that's all I have for y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. And I hate to interrupt everyone because I know I'm on a roll. I have an imprinted chicken who won't leave me alone. Look at this. Look at that annoying. Get out of that cage, you... Yeah, um, Gus Gus, if y'all haven't been watching my TikTok, is my barred rock chick that won't leave me alone and is constantly on me. Please send help. But yes, it's like having a parrot. It's glorious. It's annoying.